Greetings, hope this finds you well. So I thought we could check out this article by Chris Hedges. I found it on the Mint Press uh, Twitter, Twitter page, and it's titled, Palestinians Speak the Language of Violence Israel Taught Them. Uh, we could look at it and then discuss, see where we maybe agree with Hedges' analysis, or maybe if there's some points where we diverge a little bit, we'll see how maybe close his analysis is to that of, um, you know, Cornell West, who they are quite, uh, you know, close, close allies in different ways. But he's right with that title, though, right? Um, it's the it's the oppressor who decides where what type of where the battlefield is, what the battlefield is, and, and the settler colonial apartheid regime of Israel chooses has chosen violence time and time again, whether it's from forcibly removing Palestinians from their home and then placing Israeli settlers there from the imprisonment and torture of so ma so many Palestinians, the the uh, shooting and assassinations of so many reporters, the so many people being shot during the Great March of Return in of 2018. Peaceful people, peaceful, marching peacefully, trying to draw attention to the cause of Palestinian liberation. So many of them were gunned down by Israeli snipers. And then we see now how many airstrikes the Israeli military has launched into Gaza, again, where half of the people there are children. And we saw there was that propaganda about uh, Hamas, the Palestinians are beheading children. Okay, that obviously wasn't true. There was no evidence, and it, it came out and retracted. That was bullshit. But who who is m murdering? Who's killing the children? It's the apartheid regime side, right? So the Palestinians, when they respond, when they resist the occupation, when they resist the apartheid settler colonial regime with violence, they're responding in what they were taught from Israel. So let's check out the article without any further ado. <clears throat> Palestinians speak the language of violence. Israel taught them. I don't care for, I feel like it's harder to read this way with this black background with white text, but maybe that's just me. The indiscriminate shooting of Israelis by Hamas and other Palestinian resistance, or is it kidnapping civilians, a barrage of rockets in Israel, drone attacks on a variety of targets from tanks on machine gun nests in the familiar language of the Israeli occupier? Israel has spoken this blood soaked language of violence to the Palestinians since Zionist militias seized more than 78% of historic Palestine, destroyed some 530 Palestinian villages and cities, and killed about 15,000 Palestinians and more than 70 massacres. Some 750,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed between 1947 and 1949 to create the State of Israel in 1948. Almost a million people. Israel's response to these armed incursions would be a genocidal assault on Gaza. He's right. We already see that happening. They talked about cutting off. Well, they've already cut off water food, electricity to Gaza, a concentration camp already. Half the population is children. It's genocidal assault, as he says. Israel killed dozens of Palestinians for every Israeli killed. Hundreds of Palestinians already died in Israel air assault since the operation of Al-Aqsa flood on Saturday morning, which left 700 Israelis dead. Prime Minister war criminal Netanyahu warned Palestinians in Gaza on Sunday to leave now. And when they were trying to leave through the border with Egypt, it was being bombed by Israel. Israel is going to turn all Hamas hiding places into rubble, which again, just saying we're going to commit war crimes and bomb, uh, you know, these civilian infrastructure indiscriminately. 
But where are Palestinians in Gaza supposed to go? And Israel and Egypt blockade the land borders. There's no exit by air or sea, which are controlled by Israel. The collective retribution against innocence, it's a war crime, it's a familiar tactic employed by colonial rulers. It's, again, to set Israel as a settler colonial state. You just went through how it was violently created through death and dispossess dispossession and violence and terror. We used it against Native Americans and later in the Philippines and Vietnam. The Germans used it uh, against the Herero and Nakwa in Namibia, British in Kenya and Malaya. Nazis used it in areas that occupied uh, in the Soviet Union, Eastern Central Europe. Israel follows the same playbook, death for death, atrocity for atrocity. But it's always the occupier, yes, who initiates this um, mock bray dance and trades piles of corpses for higher piles of corpses. And again, one of the reasons Israel is able to do this is because of the unconditional support they receive from the U.S. empire, Netler, another settler colonial regime, right? Four billion in aid, military aid the U.S. gives them every year. They're sending over aircraft carriers now. Biden is unconditionally supporting this, this genocide being perpetrated by Israel against the Palestinians. This is not to defend the war. Again, I'm not a big fan of that. It is not to rejoice in, rejoice in the tax. I've seen enough violence in the Israeli-occupied territories where I covered the conflict for seven years to loathe violence. Nobody likes violence, but they're they're resisting. Like they tried it, they've tried it for a long time in very many different peaceful ways. And you get you're gonna get gunned down no matter what, right? But this is the familiar, uh, I think, yeah, denouement. I think he should have said demountsment, right? Uh, regimes implanted, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> implanted, maintained by violence and gender violence. The Haitian War of Liberation, the Mau Mau in Kenya, the Africa, the ANC in South Africa. These uprisings do not always exceed; they follow some familiar patterns but they follow some familiar patterns. Palestinians, like all colonized people, have a right to armed resistance under international law. So they have it under international law, but just morally and ethically speaking, somebody comes and kicks you out of your home, tries to take your land, you would want to stand up and fight back against that, and you're allowed to do that. See, there's... This is where the dead babies are. It's on the Palestinian side. Look at, and how would this not turn, you know, how would this, this radicalizes people having to carry, having to bury your little fucking baby in the ground, right? Because of what the apartheid regime has done, right? That's going to, just the resistance is not going to stop no matter how much Israel bombs them no matter how much the U.S., these other Western powers support this genocidal regime. The resistance is not going to stop. From the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Israel never had any interest in an equitable settlement with the Palestinians. It built an apartheid state and has steadily absorbed larger and larger tracts of Palestinian land in a slow motion campaign of ethnic cleansing. It turned Gaza in 20, 2007 to the world's largest open air prison. I would say it's a concentration camp. I mean, what does Israel, the world community, expect? How can you trap 2.3 million people in Gaza, half of whom are unemployed in one of the most densely populated spots on the planet for 16 years, reduce the lives of its residents, half of whom are children? to a subsistence level, if that, deprive them of basic medical supplies. Again, they won't even let some people out to seek cancer treatment of this concentration camp. Food, water, electricity, use of aircraft, artillery, mechanized units, missiles, naval guns, and infantry units randomly slaughter unarmed civilians not expect a violent response, right? Israel is currently carrying out waves of aerial assaults in Gaza Preparing a ground invasion has cut power to Gaza, which usually only operates two to four hours per day. Think about the 
it's people in general, people in hospitals, you know, on dialysis, people who need surgery, pregnant mothers, you know, right? Many of the resistance fighters who infiltrated into Israel undoubtedly knew they would be killed, but the resistance fighters in other wars of liberation, they decided they could not choose how they would live, they would choose how they would die. I was a close friend of Alina Margulis Edelman, who was part of the armed resistance in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising in World War II. Her husband, Mark Edelman, was the deputy commander of the uprising and the only leader to survive the war. The Nazis had sealed 400,000 Polish Jews inside the Warsaw Ghetto. The trapped Jews died in the thousands from starvation, disease, and indiscriminate violence. Very, very similar to what we see happening to the people in Gaza, right? When the Nazis began to transport the remaining Jews to the extermination camps, the resistance fighters fought back, none expected to live. Edelman, after the war, condemned Zionism as a racist ideology used to justify the theft of Palestinian land. He sided with the Palestinians. Again, it needs to be pointed out, you know, Zionism is not Judaism. There's a whole lot of Jewish people out there who do not support Zionism, who are calling out the atrocities being committed by the Israeli settler regime, right? Um, supported their armed resistance and met frequently with Palestinian leaders. He thundered against Israel's appropriation of the Holocaust to justify its repression of the Palestinian people. While Israel dined out of the mythology of the ghetto uprising, it treated the only surviving leader of the uprising who refused to leave Poland as a pariah. Edelman understood that the lesson of the Holocaust and the ghetto uprising was not that Jews are morally superior or eternal victims. History, Edelman said, belonged to everyone. The oppressed, including the Palestinians, had a right to fight for equality, dignity, and liberty. Look at that. That's Gaza. Two point five million people live there. Two point three. To be a Jew means always being with the oppressed and never the oppressors, Edelman said. The Warsaw Uprising has long inspired the Palestinians. Representatives of the PLO used to lay a wreath at the annual commemoration of the uprising in Poland at the Warsaw Ghetto mon Monument. The violence the colonizer extends, expends to subdue the occupier, the more it transforms itself into a monster. Current government Israel is populated by Jewish extremists, fanatic Zionists, and religious bigots who are dismantling Israeli democracy and calling for the wholesale expulsion expulsion or murder of Palestinians, including those who live inside Israel. The Israel philosopher, Yeshehu Leibowitz, whom Isaiah Berlin called the conscience of Israel, warned that if Israel did not separate church and state, it would give rise to corrupt rabbinite that would warp Judaism into a fascistic cult. Religious nationalism is to religion what national socialism was to socialism, Leibowitz said, who died in 94. He understood the blind veneration of the military, especially after the 67 war that captured Egypt's, uh, Egypt's Sinai, Gaza, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, Syria's Golan Heights, was dangerous and would lead to the ultimate destruction of Israel, along with any hope of democracy. Our situation would deteriorate to that of a second Vietnam to war in constant escalation without the prospect of ultimate resolution, he warned. Look at that. brought to you in support and with U.S. taxpayer dollars. He foresaw that the Arabs would be the working people and the Jews, the administrators, inspectors, officials, and police, mainly secret police, a state ruling a hostile population of 1.5 to 2 million foreigners would necessarily become a secret police state with all that implies for education, free speech, democratic institution. Corruption characteristic of every colonial regime would also prevail in the state of Israel. We see that very clearly now. He's very prescient in that. Administration would have to suppress Arab insurgency on one hand and acquire Arab quislings on the other. Um, is that like quislings? Is that like snitches? There's a good reason to fear that the Israel Defense Force, which has been until now a people's army, would, as a result of being transformed in army of occupation, degenerate, and its commanders would become military governors or resemble, uh, resemble their colleagues in other nations. 
He saw the prolonged occupation of the Palestinians would inevitably spawn concentration camp. What, what exactly they have now in Gaza. Israel said would not deserve to exist and will not be worthwhile to preserve it. The next stage of the struggle will be a massive campaign of industrial slaughter in Gaza by Israel, which has already begun. Israel convinced greater greater levels of violence will final cru finally crush Palestinian aspirations. Israel is mistaken. The terror Israel inflicts is the terror it will get. Chris Hedges. I'll leave that down below, but pretty interesting read there. And I think he's completely right. The terror Israel inflicts will be the terror that it gets, right? All solidarity with the Palestinian people as they continue their struggle for for liberation, they can continue their freedom struggle against this brutal settler colonial apartheid regime. From the river to the sea, Palestine will